Hello? Is this live? Well, I guess I'm gonna figure out in a minute or so. It says it's live. But I don't know what's going on. This is one of the problems that I have a lot of people on YouTube and I have a few people on Twitch. And what I'm trying to do is simultaneously broadcast this to both audiences in the hope that people who want one thing will come over to the other. That's what's going on. <laughs> and I'm going to pause the YouTube, the, the Twitch ones so that we're not hitting. Um, well, so that we're not playing. But yeah, th this is this is the plan. If you are on YouTube, you can in fact see me um, on Twitch TV under the name Sizzizig. I shall add that to the video. Uh, Twitch stream is at. Pardon me. I'm just going to type this in. I should actually make this in the video comments, shouldn't I? But I can't edit that in real time, so it only goes here. Anyway, um, what am I going to do, actually? I, I'm looking for a plan for something to do here, and I want to go back. I want to go to the vehicle... Oh, it's a vehicle... I was in the vehicle assembly building. So what I had in mind was that maybe I could build an aircraft which is capable of being launched or a rocket that I can launch from an aircraft. That's something I've kind of thought about in the past but I've never done. So I want to build this rocket that I basically sling underneath um, an aircraft and then we drop it from the aircraft and everything flies away and nothing explodes that wasn't supposed to. Because, you know, let's face it, rockets are all about exploding. In fact, rockets are just basically a controlled explosion in a small space. So, what we want here is... We want an aerospike. We always want the aerospikes, because the aerospikes are powerful. On the front here, we want to add a parachute. And what I'm needing from you guys out there is some feedback as to whether this is actually working or not. Because it's very hard to keep track of all this crap. Oh my goodness, I have viewers. I have a viewer list. Hey, guys. <laughs> it's about 20, two and a half. <laughs> wow, a smorgasbord. It sounds like you literally have a smorgasbord of a rocket there. Um, something like Dropbox. I'm actually trying to find a place to put my rockets that I can share them. Uh, but I actually want to integrate it with some sort of tracking just because I want to see who's downloading for fun. Why is this rocket not wanting to go on the front here? I Wait a second. If I do this, will it stick on properly? Oh, it goes on properly that way. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's go. <laughs> it's so green across all screens. Controlled explosion in a confined space. Concerns like an internal combustion engine. Yes. Uh, rockets are basically the same thing. The difference is that an internal combustion engine uses the force of the explosion to push a piston, whereas the rocket basically lets the explosion fly out the back in the hope that it, you know, will accelerate the, the rocket forwards. Uh, I'm glad to see that there's almost no one on YouTube. Um, I'm really wondering. Oh, I see. I do see people on YouTube. Um. Scott Man stream is also happening. Got to go. Oh, Matt stream. Who's Matt? Is he another Kerbal Space Program dude? Please, uh, feel free to tell me. If you are on the YouTube stream, please head over to the Twitch stream. I will try and make this work. And I will try and not talk too much. So I guess I need to have a thing to hang my aircraft from. That's good. So that will form the core of my aircraft. We need to probably have a bit more. We're just going to run a few of these along this way. Oh yeah, I've got the structural... Wait a second, I have the structural fuel transfer and there's a control version somewhere here. 
I... Oh, wait, no, I can just stick an avionics package on the front. There we go. Okay. So, from here, I need to try and figure out what I'm doing. YouTube is lagging like hell. Um, that is why I'm trying to move away from it. Although, I do actually get cash for the YouTube, and the cash is going to a good cause. So, I'm kind of torn, let's say. So, I guess what I want to do is, is you've got this center of mass thing going on. I'm just going to display the center of mass, and I want to make sure that when I'm flying my ro my plane mode, that the r engines are going to be balanced, so that we're not causing the thing to magically flip one way or another. As soon as we let go, that's fine. I don't care about it at that point, but I want to make sure that I can send my spacecraft into space. Okay, there we go, get those there. There, so the center of... Wait a second, what happened to my symmetry? Darn you. Give me my symmetry back. There we go. It's kind of starting to look like the Liberator. Anyone remember, um... Anyone remember the, the TV show Blake 7? It was an awesome British TV show about science fiction again, and yet another one of these things that turned up in the late 70s trying to cash in on Star Wars being the hotness. Oh yeah, I need to see a central lift. Yes, I am attempting a straddle launch because... Uh, I've never, I've done it before, I've tried it before and always failed, therefore there is a high potentiality for failure and hilarity which is a lot more interesting than watching me actually fine tune orbits. So I'm going to try and build a relatively large aircraft. Okay, so the lift is slightly forward of that. Where's the center of thrust? Center of thrust uh, is pretty good. I mean if I take this off, yeah okay. Center of thrust is slightly above that, so actually what I should do, I need to move this up. Oh dear. It's there. I'm going to do that. So I want the center of thrust to be roughly along the center of my... And I've lost half my sh plane again! Oh darn, fix your game! Fix your game, fix your game. Yeah, I want this. Now, the next hard point... <laughs> I might try a stratosphere jump. Uh, it seems to be that the, the astronauts are so tough that if you find yourself in orbit without a parachute on your capsule, that it is a viable strategy to put... Um, to try and land your astronaut... to get, have your astronaut jump out before the spacecraft hits the surface. I'm going to stick... Okay, I think I'm going to aim for my... Oh, is this not going to work? Oh, it's not going to work! Arr! Frustration. Um, actually, that's what maybe what I'll do. If I put hang these on here... I only need... Yeah, if I hang these here, I can then stick my undercarriage on those. That'll probably work. That'll be lighter than using lots of those. What's the worst that could happen? I mean... It's not like lives are really at stake here. Speaking of which, I did make a steak. And it was very tasty. Okay, so we have something that looks mostly interesting. Let us throw some control surfaces on it. Aim so that you're just touching the piece. What is the worst that can happen? Well, uh... It could be so bad that it hits a buffer overflow and causes my computer to crash. It could cause the game to overwrite memory in a banner that uh, leaves me with an unbootable computer. How about that? Oh, speaking of unbootable computers, um, the, the, the Mushkin guys finally sent back my warranty hard disk, so uh, we're doing well on the warranty returns. Uh, Asus, you remember my Nexus 6, uh, Nexus 7? Nexus 6 is, of course, from Blade Runner. My Nexus 7 uh, is getting returned. Uh, they got it fixed for free, so I am all happy about that. When is this going to fire? Um, I want this to fire... Uh, 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 uh. It's so hard to... S there. Okay, so that's there. And then when does this... This fires there. Okay. So I jettison, and then I fire that, and this actually should... 
this can jet you know what? actually this could jettison after launch that would be kind of cool it can drop its undercarriage and get to altitude yeah and other awesome news is the guys at the garage the body shop they figured out what was wrong with my car uh and so i got after a month i got my car back with a replaced fuel pump pump uh strato launch there we go save 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 and launch 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 okay have we got everything we have flaps we have engines uh when do the engines oh wait a second no the engines are not hooked in here i need to move my engines down this engine needs to go here and this engine needs to go here is there another engine I'm there it is there okay we should have it we have three engines on this sucker let's see what happens what well, Windows 8 oh no I'm not interested I I actually with Windows 8 I have Windows 7 and I just realized when I realized that I really needed to upgrade my desktop I kind of initially held out because I thought oh I probably should hold out till I can actually get Windows 8 but it then became clear how terrible Windows 8 was uh, from a usability perspective so I pretty much abandoned hope on that and honestly I'm not I'm not a fan of Windows I'm I'm a real hater of Microsoft okay let's see what happens we've got oh yes it's doing the splits. <laughs> That's the worst that could happen. Let's fire the engines anyway. <laughs> Wait, I'm going to switch control to this. Yes! Brilliant. Well, look, he didn't die. That was a pretty awesome launch. I think I, think I need some struts, huh? Uh, let's end flight. <laughs> I don't know. The YouTube people can't hear the audio in the, the game. That's the only thing. So as I said, if you're on YouTube, go over to my page on Twitch TV and you will see everything happening. Uh, wait a second. Okay, I wanted to do that, but I realized that I actually want to do that. Okay, and I want this to be braced up here. Okay, that might make it a little stronger. I could probably brace... Is there another way I could brace this? You know what I should do is actually brace this across here. Oh, I could brace this across the rocket, actually. That'll make it stronger in flight as well. Oh, yeah, and I should probably straighten my tailplane, huh? Because, you know, that, that tailplane, that is entirely why the whole thing did not work. Why would spend so... You know, Microsoft is basically seeing the end... The reason why Microsoft is doing Windows 8 is because they see the end of the PC era and they're trying to come up with an OS that is dedicated to devices and is unified across all their architectures. Oh, yeah. Incidentally, the beer tonight is um, Brew Free or Die IPA, um, which is by... 21st Amendment in San Francisco, which is a cool place, the brew pub. They make some awesome beers. The artwork on it features uh, Mount Rushmore with a giant Abe Lincoln breaking free and heading out to uh, with a d look of determination on his face. Uh, he might be going out to fight vampires, or if you're low budget, he might be going to fight zombies. Uh, he might actually be teaming up with the Statue of Liberty. I think that would make an awesome team. Or, you know, maybe he's just going out to talk to the Republican Party and have a discussion about what they're up to these days. Depend where you're coming from. Anyway, it's an awesome beer. I like it. Let's try launching this. Uh, clear the runway. I hear also that Google is throwing an interesting uh, new laptop as well. Oh, yes, yeah, Statue of Liberty using the Eiffel Tower, yeah. Because a lot of people forget that the Statue of Liberty is, in fact, French. Okay, let's see if I can get this sucker off the ground. I'm going to turn on my ASAS. Oh! Okay, that didn't work. <laughs> I like how there's bits flying around. This thing's... Oh, look! Thing survived. Okay. Uh, end flight. How what what went wrong there? What what really went wrong was that it kind of fell over. 
Yeah, the French were, like, big on the whole liberty thing. And, you know, so they uh, donated, they gifted the Statue of Liberty. It's, you know, it's kind of a cool story. Um, you know, that's really what it is. Okay. Stay, 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 stay. No, it is going forward. Okay, I think I need to move... I need to move more weight backwards on this. Space plane hangar. I, I, um, no, no sign, oh, I am trying to read it, but it is actually kind of hard. So don't feel left out if I miss you, because I'm having to glance over every now and then. Um, is there any easy way? I guess I could take the, uh, 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 uh. What can I move? I could actually move the landing gear forwards. So that might work. How can I best do this? Okay, first thing. I'm going to try and move this just as far forward as it'll let me. Yes. Oh. There we go. Try that. Launch. Do constructive questions like how is life? Move my gear more out to the side. That would that might also work. I might add landing gear more around the edges there. How is life? Life is always interesting. Oh shoot. Um No, 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 no. Oh, maybe, maybe what I have to do is not have that top rocket firing. Wait until I'm in the air before I fire that first rocket, right? I'm going to adjust my staging because I think this top rocket is kind of, um, oh, oh, wait, I'm, I should have fuel lines. Maybe that's what it is. Aren't I supposed to have fuel lines? Uh, okay, never mind. I, the, you know, the, the fuel flow is always dubious. Okay, so this one. I'm going to add an extra stage here, right? I'm going to save until I'm in the air. So I'm going to be firing these rockets and then I'm going to fire that one. How about that? More control surfaces. Uh, it's not as sexy as more rockets, but we can try that. I mean, this is, of course, a useless concept and maybe you guys aren't wanting to see this. It definitely wants to turn a lot. Oh dear, my nose is itching. Oh, yeah, as soon as I try to... No, 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 no! Ah. <sighs> what I could... Okay, another, another crazy plan. How about we put more rockets on this? And we, I have a perfect place for more rockets that will make sure that we pitch upwards rather than downwards. Like, there. Now the center of thrust is going to be totally out of whack with the center of mass. Actually, no, center of, center of thrust is looking much closer to the center of mass now. Maybe this will just work. Uh, let us launch. Oh, wait, but there's no way for fuel to get to those things. Back to... Back to the whole thing. And flight. Flight. Space plane hangar and some beer to help. Lower it, for God's sake. I'm... I'm doing... There we go. More fuel. Now it's starting to look like a gun star. You know what? I have a very old joystick. I, I hear it asking about a flight stick. I have this old Logitech Wingman Attack 2, which has given me great use. I just have problems with the dead spots in the game. So I've kind of given up on it because it, t it takes a long time to set up the joystick in the game. Um, let's move these down here. See, the problem is that the menu, the main game menu, doesn't let you adjust. Or only, it's the only place you can adjust the joystick. You can't. Look at that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, 
I think this this needs to be longer. Maybe if if it's longer in the, in the the length direction, then it will actually torque less. You know, torque is cheap and all that. Let's try firing. Like, and I messed up. These guys need to be here. Maybe they don't have quite so much thrust. Oh. Like even so, even with the avionics nose cone, it wants to flip like that. Torque is cheap, yes. <laughs> um, how can I can I make this thing longer? Maybe like maybe if I just put a giant nose on it, a giant schnoz, it'll not want to torque up as as rapidly. What do we have that we can stick on the front? Um, we have we have. These oh you know I could put some uh why doesn't it God damn it work There we go If I stick some of these on and then Uh God knows how I come up with some of my designs if if this is where I'm going coming from <laughs> Okay and then I'll stick the avionics on there That should that should put pitch the nose down a little more I think this is gonna nose dive actually as soon as I try anything yeah, you know what? I've just realized if I do this, the nose, it, this is going to totally nosedive. I'm going to take take the avionics and put it there. Okay. Save launch. Let's try that. <laughs> that is an ugly plane, but then again, have you seen some of the planes that have been built for space? Have you seen the Guppy? The Guppy is, is this giant transport plane that is basically like a 747 with... Uh, a whale attached to its back, and, and it was designed for moving rocket parts around, basically. Okay, I'm gonna try this. Here we go. Oh, that's looking a little better. And then let's fire up that engine. Nope, it's totally losing control again. Oh, look! Oh my goodness, I got control! Ha <laughs> ha! A Un rather unorthodox liftoff technique, but we do have control. Uh, also, I like the way... Oh, you know? <laughs> I like the way that my... Um, uh, what do you call it? My, my artificial horizon is just completely confused as to what direction I'm going in. And I'm also pushing straight down. And I'm still just pitching up like anybody's business. Maybe uh, if I just keep rotating, it will. I will be able to keep going vertically. That's it. I'm gonna fly vertically like this. This is a, the. This is a rather unorthodox um, <laughs> system, but I have to say it is working. It's like a Klingon bird of prey or something like that, isn't it? Okay, so. Screw! I'm not going to be able to get into any reasonable um, escape system. So what I'm going to do is press X to cut my power. Okay, and I need to stabilize. Need to stabilize just a little. Come on, boys. Oh, okay. Screw this. I'm going to jettison. Nope. There we go. Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. Where, where is this? Oh, darn it. <laughs> okay, now what way do we need to go to get into orbit? We need to go 90 degrees. Here we go. There. Let's go that way. Woohoo! <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Ron Burr has the correct expression on his face for once. I mean, normally I look at these guys screaming and it's like, you guys are such wimps, but... He, for once, is justified in his expression, I tell you. Okay, let's uh, try and control this a little more. I'm going to get myself going. I should have stuck Mech Jeb on this so that I don't actually have to fly this all the way to orbit. But, you know. Uh, oh, yeah, apparently I've been messing around and I still have infinite fuel turned on. Oh, that is terrible. Uh, I've been a terrible person. <laughs> um... Yes, I occasionally do use the debug menu for messing around with things. Never for the videos, because that would be wrong. Okay, let's see where we are. Okay, well, this thing this thing mostly would have worked. Um, 
Let's get ourselves up there. Accelerate ourselves out of the atmosphere. Do we really take this space plane to Lathe? I did I did take my space plane back to Lathe and I actually landed it next to the thing. Um, I took another one up, let's say. Oh, come on, come on, come on. And apparently, apparently I hear my phone ring, but you know what? I, I can't answer it at this time. I must have left. Wait a second, if my phone is in the bedroom, that means that Sky has borrowed my cell phone and has no doubt been playing games on my iPhone. She occasionally likes to play pocket planes. That is not um, what I have an iPhone for. Make it bigger and take it to Lathe. Why don't we take it... I don't know. I don't know if I can take it much bigger than this. Um, let's just come out of map mode. Look, okay. I could definitely take that to Minmus. Uh, build a plane that lands on the water. I, you know what? Landing a plane on the water, I have tried a, land, a plane that lands on the water. Look, let's go and show you the plane I have parked on Lathe. Um... <laughs> It's out here somewhere. Let's just VTOL launchers, one of these. In theory, I could lose wing length. Yes, I could lose wing length. Uh, do I believe this universe can have other living and intelligent life? Absolutely, the odds of there not being intelligent life elsewhere in the universe are so startling, rudely remote that there must be. Drake's equation, even approximately, even the least optimistic, the most pessimistic interpretation of the Drake's equation leaves us with a universe that is full of life. Uh, unfortunately, getting there requires a lot of time, effort, and strangely enough, uh, you come up with this thing called the Fermi Paradox. Have you ever heard of the Fermi Paradox? Let's uh, try, let's try flying this thing. Deactivate, activate. I'm going to see if this thing will thrust up. Oh, actually, what I want to do first is put power on. So I want to take stuff from this tank and I want to load it. So the Fermi Paradox basically says that um, it's actually relatively easy. Uh, why? How do I transfer stuff? Oh, uh, no. None selected. Tank and select. Okay. Is that going to work? No. Transfer. How do I transfer fuel? Oh, wait, is that what it is? Aha! Yes, I can transfer. Okay, transfer. Yes! And transfer. So I can refill my plane next to this tank here. So anyway, the, if you figure out that the universe is, you know, 12 billion years old, then you can go and... Uh, I'm just going to cut the power now. So you can then figure out that if you can travel, say, at 0.1% of the speed of light, that you can pretty much cross the galaxy in, uh, you know, 100 million years. And 100 million years is a relatively short time scale in the age of the galaxy, right? Do you believe in God and its miracles? No, I don't believe in any of the miracles. I'm sorry. Um, I think that most of the miracles are... I, I, if, if God exists, he's hiding very well. And I... You know, I get very annoyed sometimes because I see very religious people taking my research. And um, I see people taking my research and saying, look, this proves God exists. And I'm saying, no, it doesn't prove God exists. Uh, I get really mad at the um, those Islamic guys who took my asteroid video and, and basically said, this proves that Muhammad is great and is going to, you know, take the world into a new age or something. Okay, activate. There we go. Let's fly. Look, got my plane flying on on, on Lathe again. See, there's the fuel base, uh, and I'm gonna lift up a little. Look at that. Where should we go though? Can we take it, fly around. Oh, let let's listen. Please, seriously, right? Um, I have lived in Northern Ireland, and I've seen. The terrible pain that arguing over religion and politics can bring. Um, can we just leave it out of the channel? Um, seriously. Uh, you know, let's all be friends because we all love spaceships, right? 
Let's let's think about the things we do have in common. Oh, that's what I want. I want to turn on. Uh, let's turn off the smart ASS and deactivate these. There, and I've got a plane. Uh, yeah, and and please nobody talk about Nazis except as joking, um, because seriously, Godwin's law, you know. It's it's a real thing. So what was I saying? Yeah, so it, in the universe, if the universe is, is 14 billion years old or 12 billion years old, and uh, at 0.1% at of the speed of light, which isn't ridiculous, right? It is something that a, a, a society that masters um, plasma propulsion could do, then you can cross the galaxy in, you know, 100, 100 million years, right? So the question is, why haven't we seen any evidence of alien civilizations, given that the odds are that we're not the first, right? So basically, human race went from being um, cave dwellers to being, you know, our limited level of spacefaring in, you know, 10,000 years. So the odds are that any other life, there's many other races in the galaxy that have reached a similar level of technology. And could you imagine what happens in a thousand years' time? You know, a thousand years, you can totally imagine um, us being able to send space probes or something to, hey, to Alpha Centauri, right? So why haven't we seen any evidence of alien life? And that's a Fermi par paradox. The odds are we should have. And so there's a number of solutions. One is, really interesting, that people realize the amount of energy going to other planets is, is so terrible and so hard that instead they just play video games instead. Because that's way more fun than actually getting on a generation starship and living in a tiny space for hundreds of years. That's one. The other possibility is that uh, intelligent races wipe themselves out repeatedly. And that's not altogether unplausible, let's say. You know, we're not we're not <laughs> that far away from screwing ourselves up again. I mean, we've invented antibiotics, but we have a terrible habit of overusing antibiotics and creating um, you know, resistant resistant strains just simply because, you know, people want antibiotics for everything. Um, it's also possible that on time scales, you know, other terrible catastrophes happen. Or you could imagine that Star Trek is real and there is such a thing as the Prime Directive. And if you find an alien race, if you're an alien race and you're star hopping around the galaxy and, and you know, shagging green skinned aliens um, because, you know, they're hot dancers or whatever and they ask you to tell you about this thing called love, um, maybe you find the occasional primitive society and, you, and there's a rule that says, no, you don't touch this. That's, you know, another possibility. I mean, frankly, you know, you then look at other possibilities, you know, self-reproducing machines, and the universe could become a very scary place. So it's not entirely unplausible that there could be some sort of cosmic police force or whatever. Oh, the other thing is that, yeah, maybe there are some sort of higher planes of existence and that we're not understanding. And sure, maybe societies somehow figure a way that to just step out of the universe that is not really a fermi type answer but hey it's plausibility i mean if you believe some of the hippie shit that i, I hear talked around this place sure you know maybe they all ascend into their own version of the new sphere and jump into some parallel dimension yes yeah, so does anybody know if there's any like secret um where are the easter eggs on lathe because i'm here and i don't know where the easter eggs are i haven't looked I'm just kind of flying around, looking at stuff. Flying across this sea. The Borg! Yes. The Borg is, is a, a very real possibility. I mean, or, or more, so, more so much uh, Berserkers, right? Stargates. Stargates would be awesome. I wanted to have a father that could go and say, Hey, Dad, can you teach me X thing and how to program Y thing? Yeah, I'm trying to do... So, if you guys... I don't know if anybody has kids and they're interested in teaching them how to program. I found this thing the other day and I've completely forgotten what it is, but it's like a drag and drop programming language, which uh, looks pretty cool. 
and I had Sky on it, and I basically had to pry her off it with my my hands. Um, it's in Java, and I can't remember what it's called now. If you don't like hippie stuff, why the heck would you decide to live in San Francisco? Because San Francisco is awesome, and it's not just hippies. It's also, and, and also hippies have awesome parties as well. Uh, it's just, you hippies are as much a joke as anything else. We have, San Francisco also has a very large libertarian leaning po population. Seriously. Um, we just don't have average people, right? We're always like either, we're, we have the people that are, we're campaigning for Ron Paul and because he isn't in the, isn't in the election, they're going to vote for Obama. I mean, that's, that's what San Francisco is like. They, because they think Obama is more as a preferable option to Romney. That, that's how it works. I mean, they, they were wanting Ron Paul, but uh, since they can't get Ron Paul, they'll take Obama. That happens. Seriously. San Francisco? You know, a lot of cool shit. Uh, pardon me. San Francisco has a lot of awesome stuff going for it, seriously, and we have all the tech companies. That's why I came out here. Mm. And we also have Burning Man, which is the most amazing festival in the world, which you might want to end the YouTube stream. It is a slideshow. Um, I'm going to... This program is called Scratch. Yes, a little big history on YouTube has reminded me that the programming language is called Scratch. And it's actually really cool. You can drag and drop stuff and move sprites around and write. You could even write a game in it, I'm pretty sure. Um, what else is going? I wonder what would happen if nobody in America voted. Um, you know what? Here's the thing. The way the system is working in, in America right now, it only matters if like one, only about one million people's votes are going to matter. Because those are going to be the people that haven't made up their minds and are in the swing states. Everybody else has no bearing on the election anymore. And it's kind of sad to see democracy reduced to this. But I don't have citizenship, so I'm not going to, you know, go too hard on this. You think we will land on Mars? Um, we, you, as in people, land on Mars because, you know, we have actually landed on Mars repeatedly. We landed on Mars with Viking. And we're doing a pretty good job with Curiosity right now. Okay, what I want is my surface information. I don't want landing autopilot. I don't need that anymore. Okay, I'm going to try... I'm at one kilometer up. I want to make sure I'm not descending too quickly. I'm going to try and get back to this, um, this refuel thing. You know what? One of the things I'm missing... I've turned the sound down so I don't get um, feedback through the speakers, and I'm actually really missing the, the audio cues that it gives me. Okay, so I'm going to activate this and deactivate this and I'm going to set my surface to 225 execute okay there we go so now I'm going to try and adjust my vertical speed and find this do you do I believe in the Illuminati no but I do believe in the Illuminati who uh, run some awesome burning man camps and uh, I DJ'd at their parties quite a few times so, yeah, the Illuminati are way more fun. Uh, I don't believe in generally in conspiracy theories, although there have been genuine conspiracy theories that um, have existed. It's just they're a lot more boring than the Illuminati. The Illuminati. Um, has anybody heard of the Glomar Explorer? That was a cool conspiracy theory, and it's kind of right in my, back, in my backyard, so that's why I'm going to talk about it. So the Glomar Explorer, when I was at school in the 80s, I remember this poster on my wall which basically talked about how there was an exploration ship in the Pacific that was looking to mine manganese nodules off the ocean floor. This was something that had been distributed to, um, to the schools to basically, you know, as like a scientific educational thing. I was like, oh, that's cool, you know, I remember this. Um, Actually, it turned out that they were not there to do that. That was a complete cover story. They were, in fact, looking for the wreck of a Soviet submarine which had sunk off Hawaii in incredibly deep water. And the Soviets hadn't, you know, rescued anyone. There, there was no, 
um, there was no way they were going to get anyone back from that. So they basically abandoned the wreck. But the US was very interested in the technology that the Soviets had, and so they built a ship specifically for this purpose, and that was the Glomar Explorer. It was essentially a giant crane that was stabilized in multiple axes, and it would go to the wreck site and you know pick this thing up off the ocean floor and it would place it on a barge that was you know would it was under the water this barge oh gotta get up a bit of speed here so those of those were actually built in san francisco bay uh and they were sailed out through the bay in secret or the the submarine the submersible thing was uh shipped out of the bay in secret okay i'm totally overshooting here there we go now i'm gonna fly backwards a little Oh dear 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 Oh This is what happens when you talk about conspiracy theories while you're trying to fly a plane. Okay, that is terrible. Um so the yeah, Glomar Explorer, it's an interesting story. Um and so, yeah, the cover story was that they, it was funded by Hughes and they went out to the middle of the Pacific and they put out all this PR to basically say, hey, we're not hunting Soviet submarines. We're actually looking for manganese nodules on the ocean floor. Yeah, I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to send another one up now. And so that, so it wasn't, it wasn't even like hiding the conspiracy. They put it in plain sight so that nobody would ask questions. And of course, that makes me ask.